Welcome to lesson 6.1. Let's start with a little bit of review in this lesson. So far in your math history, you have learned how to plot two different kinds of points. You have talked about the Cartesian plane, which is the name of the plane where you just plot x comma y. So 5 comma 2 would be right there. 0 comma 0 right there. 1 half negative 3 right there. You've been plotting those for forever. Then you've also learned about the complex plane, which helps you plot imaginary numbers or complex numbers. So if I take the complex number 3 plus 4i, I would plot it as 3 comma 4. You always do the real part as the x and the imaginary part as the y. So if I gave you like negative 2 plus 4, uh, let's do negative 2 plus 3i. So negative 2 plus 3i would be right there. So those are the two kinds of planes you've learned about so far. We're going to introduce a new one called the polar coordinate plane. Now, the polar coordinate plane, we graph things as r comma theta, meaning we r is how far you are from the origin. So there's my r. And theta is the angle you're at. Polar coordinates are most helpful for jobs like pilots or uh, people in who do sailing or in submarines. Because if you're a pilot and I tell you, hey, there's an object at 5 comma 2 from you, that doesn't really help very much. Instead, it's a lot more helpful to know, hey, there's an object three miles away from you that is 90 degrees in front of you. So that's usually like the real world application of the polar coordinate system is people who fly or do things in the water sailing, they tend to use the polar coordinate system because it's a lot more helpful to know how far something is from you than where it's at. So let's talk about plotting these points. Here we have our first polar coordinate point. 3 comma 2 pi thirds. Remember 3 is the r, 2 pi thirds is the theta. So I'm going to draw a graph here. I want my radius to be 3. So I'm going to draw 3 out. That gives me a radius of 3. And I want the theta to be 2 pi thirds. So I know 2 pi thirds is about there. So that gives me a radius of 3 long and an angle of 2 pi thirds. So we don't need that line anymore. We're just graphing these as a point. That is the point that is a radius of 3 and an angle of 2 pi thirds. Let's try this one. I have a radius of 4 and an angle of negative pi 6. So 1 two, three, four. There's my radius of four and an angle of negative pi six. Remember negative angles go clockwise. So that would put me about there. There's that point. Radius of four out, angle of negative pi six. Let's do one more. Now this one is an interesting one to look at. It has a radius of negative 2 and a theta of pi thirds. Now you might think, what the heck does a radius of negative 2 mean? If you have a negative radius on polar coordinates, it means you're going to graph it in the opposite direction. So normally, pi thirds would be about there. But because this is a radius of negative 2, I'm going to go in the opposite direction of pi thirds and put my point there. So that's how you graph a negative radius in polar coordinates. Normally we'd be right here, that's a radius of 2 in pi thirds, but because it's a negative radius we go the opposite direction to get negative 2 pi thirds. Now 
Doing these examples, you might have noticed that there are actually several different ways we could write this. For example, let's go back to C. If I wanted to graph this point, negative 2 pi thirds, I could also label that as a positive 2 radius and at 1, 2, 3, 4 pi thirds. That would be the exact same point right here at 4 pi thirds and a radius of positive 2. So there are multiple ways that you can write the exact same point on the polar coordinate system. So understanding that, let's try a couple. So here we're going to graph it first. We have a radius of 3 and an angle of pi fourths. So that takes me right there. And now I'm going to follow these instructions to write this same point in different ways. So for number one, I want my radius to be positive. So the radius is going to stay a positive three. But now I want my angle to be between two pi and four pi. So now we're talking coterminal angles. So right now it's at pi fourths. If I add two pi, I'll get to the same point. So pi fourths plus two pi gives me nine pi fourths. So I'm just gonna write up here, we added two pi to get to that one. And that is the same exact point. Nine pi fourths will be the same angle as pi fourths. So it's the same point, just written differently. Let's look at number two. Now I want the radius to be negative but I still want it to be the same point. So if I want a radius of negative three, what should the angle be? Well, negative three would normally get me to here, go across the circle, and that would be at, let's see, one, two, three, four, five pi fourths. So if I go at negative three, five pi fourths, that should get me to the same point. Because I have five pi fourths here, but then I do the opposite radius, negative three as the radius, and that takes me across the circle back to my original point. Or another way you could think about this is to change the radius to negative. You're basically adding and subtracting pi because you're going halfway around the circle. Let's do one more. Number three. I want my radius to be positive again, but this time I want my theta to be negative. So remember, I want this same point here, but I want the angle to be the negative angle that gets me to that point. So go clockwise. 1 pi force, 2 pi force, 3 pi force, 4 pi force, 5 pi force, 6 pi force, 7 pi force. So negative 7 pi fourths would get me to the same point. We're just going clockwise with that radius. Or you could also think we just minus 2 pi. It's a coterminal angle to this point. I just minus 2 pi to get to that coterminal angle. So there's a couple examples of we took this one blue point and we wrote it in a lot of different ways. There's a lot of different ways you can write a single point in polar coordinates. Now it's your turn. For B, I want you to start by graphing where the point is. We've got a radius of five this time. So plot the point and then follow the instructions to satisfy same instructions, these three things, but for this new point. So pause the video, try that out, and then come back to check your work. Let's check your work. So if I want this same point, but I want the angle to be between two pi and four pi, 
I take 2 pi thirds and then I add pi to it to get 8 pi thirds. Sorry, add 2 pi to it. There we go. If I want the radius to be negative, that takes me across the circle right there. So negative 5 and this point right there is at 5 pi thirds. So negative 5, 5 pi thirds would take me across the circle back to my original. And if I want my angle to be negative, 1 pi thirds, 2 pi thirds, 3 pi thirds, 4 pi thirds. So if I go clockwise, that's negative 4 pi thirds to get to the same point. So those are, once again, four different versions to write the exact same point on this polar coordinate plane. In the next video, we're going to talk about how this point, this polar coordinate, is really just a right triangle. And we're going to go back to our old school Sokotoa.